This week, we take a look at the 2020 presidential election and how it's taking shape. We're still about 20 months away from Election Day, but the races have already begun with a crowded Democratic field forming to challenge President Donald Trump, and Democrats are lining up to take on Senator Martha McSally. For insight into these high-profile races, we turn to James Kelly, a commentator for 1030 KVOI Radio, and Jim Nitzel, the executive editor of the Tucson Weekly and Tucson Local Media. We're more than a year out. Martha McSally is running for the rest of John McCain's term. Mark Kelly and Ruben Gallego are in for the Democrats. Is this going to be a referendum race on President Trump? In Arizona, it's not always like that. I mean, we, we had uh, Republican presidents that, you know, John McCain didn't run on George Bush's successes of his first term. Uh, Jeff Flake didn't run on the successes of George Bush uh, in his first term for Congress. It's, it's not really a referendum on the president. I know everybody tries to say that. I know the media likes to say that, but I don't think it is. I think when you start getting down to Senate congressional races, you're talking about what's important to the people of that state. I think that used to be true. I don't think it's true anymore as you watch these uh, battles. They're, they've been nationalized on a level uh, that is increasing, in my uh, opinion. I, I think when you look at what happened in tw tw uh, 2018, if, if Hillary Clinton had been in the White House, I think Martha McSally would have very easily won that race, for example. I think people do react to the person in the White House. I think that's why Republicans had such a great run when Obama was in the White House. And I think, conversely, it's why Democrats are winning for the first time in Arizona statewide uh, because you have Donald Trump in the White House. Does that matter, do you think, in these races where the candidates stand with whomever is in the White House? The Republican Party isn't John McCain's party anymore. It was. It could have been Mitt Romney's, but it, it isn't. It's Donald Trump's party now. So that platform is going to reflect him. And anybody running as a Republican you're either going to reflect that platform in your, your own rhetoric, in your own propaganda, or you're not. Um, and if you don't, you're going to have to deal with a very hardcore base within the Republican Party, not just Arizona, but at the, very, at the county levels of every single state in the nation. If you are not supporting the Republican Party platform, the, the party of Donald Trump, because he's the president, it's his party now, there's going to be an issue with your own your own political base. I, I think that's correct. I think it is Donald Trump's party now, for better or for worse, for Republicans. Where that takes them down the road remains to be seen. And I think that uh, if you do not fall in line with Donald Trump, uh, you are going to face that primary challenge that may uh, knock you out. I think that's why you saw Martha McSally move from a fairly centrist candidate when she was here in southern Arizona representing uh, CD2 in Congress to moving much more closely to Donald Trump because she was concerned about a primary challenge in that U.S. Senate race, and uh, I, I think she, there's nowhere for her to move away from him now. I think she's she's saddled with that. Martha McSally most likely won't have a, a serious primary. That's at least the way, again, now more than a year out is looking. But does she come in as a wounded candidate because the U.S. Senate race that she ran against Senator Sinema was so bruising? She's not going to have a problem with an, uh, a, a primary that she won. And, but lost against Kristen Sinema. Her, her issue is uh, going to be, can Kelly Ward, Dr. Ward, can she hold on to the amalgam that the Arizona Republican Party has created, that there has a certain amount of peace right now between the very uh, Tea Party-ish uh, Kelly Ward supporters and the more centrist Republicans that supported Martha McSally. Can she hold on to that amalgam? If she can't, then the Republicans have a problem. But um, I don't think, you know, uh, like I said, at that local level, that's where Martha McSally has really got to make sure, and Dr. Ward have to make sure, that that, that, that coalition stays together of centrist and very conservative Tea Partiers. Jim, what do you see as the lessons coming out of 18? Well, you saw Kirsten Sinema really did not embrace the Democratic uh, title. You know, she wasn't running as a Democrat. She was running really as an independent away from both parties. And that was very successful uh, for a Democrat to win a U.S. Senate seat. It hadn't happened in 30 years in Arizona. So clearly there was something 
magical in that formulation, as opposed to David Garcia, who uh, got clobbered, is uh, the Democratic candidate who went pretty far to the left. So uh, again, I think you'll see uh, if Mark Kelly comes out of this, you'll see him running a very similar uh, campaign as Christian Cinema ran. I don't think you'd see Ruben Gallego run that campaign. Obviously, he's much more to the left than uh, Mark Kelly is. Uh, the question is, who comes out of that primary? And, and uh, that's going to be fascinating to watch. All right, gentlemen, let's take a break there. We'll come back to you both at the end of the show.